There were some showers today. We'll find out if we need an umbrella tomorrow. We head on over to Chief Meteorologist Ed Piotrowski. Parking meters are up and working here in Surfside Beach, but some residents feel this change isn't working. Brianna Smith here from WPDE. I'm on scene of a large apartment fire. It's the Windsor Green Apartments behind me in the Carolina Forest area. Well, Tim, the university has been giving us updates all night. The newest information is that the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division is taking over this shooting. I'm a skeptic, but it's possibly there. You know, it's an awful big universe. Who knows? Got to see it to believe it. It's my thing. And I actually have a team leader, Bob Durr, with me right now. And Bob, tell me what progress your team has made today. It's Brianna Smith here from News Channel 15. I'm on the scene of where shooting took place at 722 tonight and this is the scene behind me. We know that one person was shot when they were taken to Grand Strand Regional Medical Center. We also know that there's at least one suspect and that they drove away from this scene. What we don't know is what that vehicle looks like or what that person looks like. And devastating is exactly what Nikki Haley called this today after she toured this afternoon. At a news conference today, we learned that 189 people were displaced by the fire, which burned 109 condos in 26 buildings. We also learned that all of those people are accounted for, so no lives were lost. The State Forestry Commission confirmed that there was a human involvement in starting the fire, although the exact cause is still unknown. It started near power lines in the back of the complex near Postal Way. They don't believe someone was burning debris, though. The Horry County Fire Chief says the winds pushed the fire, causing it to spread quickly, which is why so many homes were lost. Governor Haley praised the first responders' ability to stop this fire from spreading even further. It is unbelievable to see how the fire jumped the water multiple times. Chief Crosby did say the fire claimed a lot of lives of pets. Anyone who lost a pet should report it to the police department. Horry County Police Chief Sandra Rhodes said the difficult part about this situation was that there were, they didn't know how many people weren't home in these condos because it was such a transient area. But now that they know that everyone is accounted for, they're thankful that no lives were lost. Beautiful Polly's Island is known for its serene beaches, excellent sunsets, and seashell hunting. But if you take a closer look right now, this is what you'll see. There are thousands of dead fish all over the beach. Sean Arnott and his friend live on Polly's Island, but haven't been down to the ocean in months. Today was a special trip. It's not something pleasant to look at at all. It's pretty, it's pretty morbid. There's lots of dead fish everywhere. So what caused these men, Hayden Fish, to make their final resting place Polly's Island? I heard there was like an oxygen deficiency or something like that in the water, which caused them all to uh, suffocate. Experts say that's one theory. It could also be the unusually high and low tides we've been having. And then there's that possibility of a mysterious deadly algae. But all our net knows is that seeing tons of dead fish is, well, pretty fishy. Uh, it's just not really a pretty sight. Three schools in Horry County are holding their proms at Club Boca. That's a bar at Broadway at the Beach in Myrtle Beach. And a parent at Ainer High School says that's not an environment that teenagers should be in. And he says he's not alone. Howard Schuler of Ainer loves his children and always wants them to be safe. Yeah, that's my concern, safety. His oldest daughter, who goes to Ainer High School, has the opportunity to go to prom this year. She won't be going if that's where they're going to be held at. A phrase reminiscent of the popular movie Footloose. I cannot let this dance happen. But it's not the dancing Schuler's worried about. It's the place the dance is being held. The environment. You just don't put a kid in top in that top in the environment. Aner Conway and Green Sea Floyd's high school are all having their proms at Club Boca, which is a bar at Broadway at the Beach in Myrtle Beach. And while the bar area that serves alcohol will be closed during the prom, Schuler's worried about the influence the atmosphere of Broadway at the Beach has on teenagers. They're going to be open for business later on that night, so the school's going to be, you know, out of there. And there's people going to be outside standing in line waiting to get in. Teal Britton with Horry County School says this is the fifth year in a row Club Boca has been used and they've never had a problem. But Schuler says he hopes the schools reevaluate where they hold proms. If they don't, he may take the issue to the state. I plan to go to Columbia. I'm going to go a little higher. Teal Britton with Horry County School says students aren't allowed to enter back into the dance once they've left. Britton also notes that parents should have a conversation with their child about safety during prom. A community comes together to remember the life of Hartsville football player Ronald Rouse. I'm Brianna Smith. Tim McGinnis has the night off.
Nearly 2,500 people filled the Hartsville High School gym to say goodbye to the 18-year-old who collapsed at a game last Friday night. He was pronounced dead at the hospital. Rouse's teammates were the first to walk into the arena and were seated near his parents and family. His head coach, Jeff Calabrese, gave remarks and said Rouse made people laugh with his deep voice. Calabrese went on to say number 74 changed many lives with his strong Christian beliefs. The coach said even in death, Rouse brought people together. Many in the community said they showed up today because he was a role model for all who knew him. Uh, I wanted to come out and... There were some showers today. We'll find out if we need an umbrella tomorrow. We head on over to Chief Meteorologist Ed Piotrowski in the First Alert Weather Center. But by early next week, big cool down. It'll feel more like fall. So I get to take my jacket out. You will be able to use it, especially Monday. Awesome. Thanks, Ed. And we'll be right back.